I hope everyone can see me and can hear me clearly. We're just gonna just wanna wait a little bit for people that is joining us. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, maybe while we're waiting for people to enter the, the, the webinar room, um, maybe you can share with us in the chat box where you are, where everyone is from. Good evening, everyone. Let us see. Oh, there's lots of people coming in. Welcome, everyone. We've got people. Let me see. We've got Lazan. Oh, hi, Lazan. Lazan is in, I think, in Pretoria with her daughter for a follow up. I hope everything went well, Lazan. We've got Antoine Peterson from PE, Pretoria, Sasselberg, Stalenbos. Lovely Stalenbos. There's a Bloemfontein, that's Lazan in, in Joburg. Welcome, everyone. Milani from Pretoria, welcome. We're so glad everyone is here. Thanks, Lazan. I'm so glad everything went well with Lashay. Pretoria, Siska, welcome. Oh, Durbanville. I used to stay there way back when. I think I was 25 years old. Durbanville, Marianne from Pretoria, welcome. Ravonia. So we've got a lot of people here. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you made time to be with us on this webinar. This webinar is also, we are also live streaming to our Facebook group. And um, so there's lots of people they're watching as well so you guys must all can also go ahead and um in the comments box let us know where you guys are from um karen my sister my business partner my best friend she's the moderator so she's behind the scenes this evening but she will be looking at all the comments and questions you have in the chat box and then at the end of the presentation we will um, address those questions for you for you guys. Okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of, of a background about who am I. So as, you, as you've maybe read or heard, I'm Elise, and I'm the co-owner of BioLink South Africa and International, together with my sister and her husband, Dion. And the business this year is already 13 years old, and we've got very, a lot of um, uh, agencies all around South Africa with the passion, we all have the same passion, helping children um, with attention, executive function challenges, cognitive skills challenges, and we are very excited to do this webinar tonight to talk a little bit about um, listening skills. Now, um, yeah, that's a, that's quite an interesting topic to, to address. And there I went off because uh, um, I, as an adult, I also have um, ADHD. So just to bring myself back, you see I'm self-regulating, bring myself back. I'm a registered nurse by profession. And for many years, earlier years, I've worked as a medical sales representative for big pharmaceutical companies like Novartis. And I actually, um, you know, promoted products like the, the products like Ritalin, you know, the one that nobody likes, but if you understand how it's used for the right person, it's a great product. Um, currently now for the last um, eight years, I've been working with my sister closely um, heading as head of the, all the agencies here in South Africa. And we also are, have our own agency in Bloemfontein. We are also the directors of professional development for our sister company in the USA, Play Attention. And there we work with professionals, um, psychologists, 
uh, doctors, helping them um, in their uh, respective, in, in, in certain areas in their practices. Um, and then also, you know, because we, it's not like we don't have a lot, a, a lot to do, but we are also the owners of sister bosses where we teach parents, oh, not necessarily parents, but a lot of the time it's moms, working moms or moms staying at home wanting to bring their businesses online. So yeah, we've got a, we are busy, but we love every moment of it. But to, this topic for tonight is listening with attention. So just to give you an idea of what is listening. So if, if teachers in class or you as a parent speak to your child and you say, you must listen to me now, I'm talking to you now, you know, the child don't really understand what, what you mean by um, listening. What is listening? And there's different types of listening. It depends on what you do. So you will get um, listening when you have to evaluate something, when you must be sympathetic um, towards somebody. Um, there is listening when you have a dialogue or something, somebody making sense. So what, what is it to listen actively? So we're going, just, we're going to talk about active listening only tonight. So there's different types of, act, of listening. So just active listening. So active listening is the ability to pay attention to and effectively interpret what other people are saying. Okay, so I always, this, this last week, I did a study, study method course with children. And the week before, I did a course on on active listening and taking notes in class. And what I'm trying to teach students is when you listen to your teacher, is to really try and understand what are they saying? Do you understand the concepts? So you must have a, the ability to, to listen, understand, and then also be able to tell somebody else what you heard. Okay, that's just putting it in, in, in layman's terms. So why am I saying this? Why do we get children that struggle with active listening skills? So if we, I just want to move the, there you are, I just want to move the, the PowerPoint. So if we look at listening, this tree is just an illustration to show you that we want our children at the top of the tree, the green tree. We want our children to be able to listen, to think, to concentrate, to be able to solve problems, to learn, pay attention. But in order for our children to do that, we need to develop their cognitive and executive functioning skills. And those skills are the skills in this illustration. Cognitive skills is the what is basically the roots. So those are the, are the skills at the bottom. And children are not born with these skills. So these skills are, are developed as you grow older and as you are um, getting experiences and different things that you do. And then you get your executive functioning skills. So that's a tree trunk. So that's the more higher order thinking processes. So where you have to be, you'll be able to plan, you must make um, uh, 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 organizational skills, you have to um, uh, control your emotions, self-regulate, um, impulse control, filter distraction. So there's a lot of things to consider. Now, cognitive skills and executive functioning skills, they all work together. So you need all of these skills in order to, if we talk about tonight, to be able to listen actively. And that is a skill that must be practiced. So for instance, say a child one of the cognitive skills is not very well developed. So we look at the gray um, image of the tree. 
So if one of those skills are not well developed, it has an impact. So everything works together. So then it has an impact on the output. So will the child be able to read? Will the child be able to um, sit still? Will the child be able to um, pay attention for a long period of time? So listening skills is important, but it, we must practice it. And it depends on how we develop the cognitive and executive functioning skills. Okay. Going forward, let's just look at what is the difference between listening and hearing. And there's a big difference. And I think it's a good idea to explain this to, um, to your child. Because, you know, in grade school, reading comprehension, you know, generally lags behind listening comprehension. So you have to be able to be a very good listener in order for you to be a very good reader with comprehension. And the best way for our children to develop active listening skills is by giving them the opportunity to um, practice this by non-print resources like audio books or um, uh, read out loud discussions, movies, things like that. So teachers will typically give a direction or an instruction and then they will provide a clarification, you know, as necessary. So students that, that, is, that keenly listen to the teacher and they understand what he's saying, so they, those children have a distinct advantage compared to children that only hear because as you hear, you can see here, hearing is just a passive, passive reception of sound. Where listening is the active participation in what you hear. And in this, the study method course I did with children just this, in this week, I was trying to teach them to, when you listen to your, to your teacher in class, not to just look at them, you know, with a blank stare and just hear the sounds and something they say and something is coming out of their mouth. I, I show them always, I show them, they go like, the mouths go like this and then they don't think. So we want them to start to listen about what they are hearing, make sense of it, try to make um, mental images of what they are hearing because that's going to help them to understand the work better and because they understand it better that information already is then in memory to refer back to when they go home this afternoon to do um, homework or do summaries but it's a skill we have to practice then we have to practice um, with them we have to show them how to do that all right, so if we look at why is it important for us to teach our children to be very good active listeners in class, um, I think the, the, the two most important reasons is that it increases their academic understanding. So here I'm talking about listening comprehension. And I must say to you, I don't know if it's the teachers or parents here, but I think you all would agree that if we look at our children today, there's a big gap um, for not a, a, it's not really a gap, it's a, they lack um, a very good comprehension. So they will listen to you or hear you like I've just explained, and I can do an explanation of something, but they are not able to you know, tell, tell you afterwards what they heard. Or they might remember a word you said and they will just um, say the word again. And if you ask them, what does it mean? They don't know. And the same happens with when they read. So they read a piece of work or a sentence or a paragraph. And then there's a certain word in there, like let's take for instance, like a district. And they will read over that word, but when you ask them, do you, that you understand everything, they will tell you yes. 
And if you go back and you ask them, okay, tell me what do you understand in this content, of this, in this content, this, this piece of work that you, that you did now, what do you understand um, is a district? And then they will not be able to tell you. So comprehension is a big, big, big um, a problem that we have currently, you know, with not currently, I think for a long time with our kids. Um, and I think parents and, and teachers will be able to agree with me there. So it's important for them to be able to have great active listening skills because it increases their academic understanding. So that children will be able to understand the content that is explained. They will be able to identify if there is certain concepts that I don't understand. And then I try to motivate, motivate them to put their hands up because they don't want to put their hand up in the class. They are either scared the teacher will be cross, which is not going to happen, but, and also they are scared that the that they, um, they mates in the class is going to think they are dumb. So they, are, they don't want to do that, but we have to teach them to do that. So they will have a clear understanding of content, and then they will also have a better understanding of, uh, of, of different um, fundamental concepts. They will also be able to stay focused and listen in the class for a longer period of time if they practice the ability to um, actively listen to the teacher. I'm going to invite you to a webinar I'm going to do. I'm saying it's a webinar, it's more like a workshop. I'm going to do on the 27th of March, that is next Saturday at 10 o'clock. So it's a, it's a workshop that I do with children. So from age, from grade four, it's more re relevant for your grade four to grade eight, nine children, where I actually am going to teach them how to listen more actively in class. I'm going to give them some cues and things they have to do to be able to, you know, switch on their ears. I always tell them this things next to your head is not an ornament. They are there for a reason. So I'm showing them how to listen actively for the teacher, what to listen out for, when to ask questions and all those things. And then I'm also going to show them while listening, how do you make notes? Okay, so how are you going to make notes? Because that is a skill we have to teach children as well, listening and making notes. This is not something that they must start to do when they are in, you know, in university. They must start doing that and practicing that already on a lower grade. So it's going to, you know, when they have the ability to, to actively listen, it's going to help them with that as well. It's going to help with their concentration and then also again the recall of information. So when they, like I said previously, so when they go home this afternoon and they start to do an activity for homework or they start to do um, summaries, they already have an idea of what was explained in the class. So it helps a lot, um, you know, going forward. The other thing, and that's the, the um, also a big benefit for our children, is they will have more time on tasks. So there's less wasting of time. So what will happen in class is when they listen to a teacher, they give, the teacher gives an assignment or something they must do. When they clearly understand what they have to do, it's going to save them time because they can start immediately with the assignment. They know exactly what to do with the assignment, with the assignment. So they don't have to ask a lot of questions or wonder what's going on. And again, remember, like I said, I work with children and for many years when I do study method courses with them, they don't want to ask questions. They don't want to ask the teacher. They don't want to ask their, their friends. Um, so they will ask friends afterwards and then most of the time that friend also doesn't know. So 
you know, it's just a, it's, 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 I want to say sad because I want them to be, to know that it's okay to put your hand up in class to ask the question because 95 of the, 95 percent of the children in the class also doesn't know um, the answer. But if they listen in class to what they must do, they will also not, not be or, or less prone to make unnecessary mistakes. So that's why we need to practice the skill of active listening. Now, most of, lots of the time, the children and the parents, then they go like this. So I'll ask them, okay, so you didn't listen in class, so when you get home, you're not sure what the homework was that you have to do. Now you're not sure. Now you ask your mom or your dad. And then I tell them. But they were not in class. So how, how can they know? So that's why it's important for them to start practicing the skill of active listening so that we can, we can begin to practice the ability to identify when don't I understand something? When is the concept just too difficult? When must I put my hand up? to ask the teacher to explain it to me so that when I go out of the class, I know exactly what to do. And also then to save them time because if they listen, they know what to do, they can start immediately. Okay, so that's why it's especially important for us to, to promote or teach them how to practice the active listening skills. So that webinar, we've got everybody that registered here for the web, for this workshop tonight, we will send you a um, invitation, you can just register. So it will be for your child. So that will be your child must be there. And then I encourage you as a parent to be there as well. But that you can listen to what I'm teaching. So what they, they can try at school or in class. And then you can, in the evenings, you know, just check that they do it, did they get it right, what are, they, what are they struggling with? Okay, so what are the factors that influence listening? So what is it that happens maybe in class or at home that influences your child's ability to be a great or good active listener? Um, the most important one. Um, of all of them is the ability to have a sustained attention. So that will be the ability to sit in class and attentively listen to the teacher. And that's a very difficult thing because if they don't like the subject or they don't like the teacher or the teacher is boring or the subject is boring, it's so much difficult you know, so much more difficult for them to um, actively listen and sustain their attention for a period of time. If you are going to talk to me about something that, that I'm not at all interested in, so maybe you're going to talk to me about robots or something, and you're going to explain how it works in the details and everything, I'm really going to struggle to you know, to, to listen, to understand, to try and make sense of it, because I don't like it. But we can teach them certain skills and give them certain tips and stuff to do in class to help them to develop the skill. I hope it makes sense. So that's the most, the biggest one is that influence their ability to, to, um, inf to, actively listening class is the inability to have a sustained attention. The other one is the ability to filter distractions. Now that can be like noises in class or movements in class. So, and that's a difficult thing because how do we know if your child is distracted by something? You, you really don't know because you can have a child that is a dreamer and nothing distracts that child because he's in his mind, he's in his own world. So I'm going to talk about the assessment that we have that can help you to get an, um, a, uh, an idea if your child is distracted by something. But if we talk about distractions um, overall, it's auditory, so maybe noises, 
that's that's in the class and let's face it classrooms are noisy it's not quiet so noises in the classroom outside does it, the lawnmower now we're in lockdown there's no lawnmowers and it's when it's winter but anything a car um going by a motorbike and then also um what you see so if there's lots of movements in the class and lots of visual um, input, so there's lots of pictures in the class, this child is sitting at the back and there's lots of, the, the, the um, classmates in front is passing notes or, or taking something out of the um, bookcase, this is, that, that is being um, too much distracted. So let me just put it into pers uh, um, perspective. Every one of us has a normal amount of the, well, let me put it like this and let me explain it a little bit better. So every one of us is distracted by noises or movements, but we can filter it out and then stay on task. And then I've got this explanation just to help you make sense of it. So when you sit in church, for example, and there's a baby in the church and the baby is crying. You will hear the baby, but you are able to filter out that noise and then listen to the, to the pastor. So you can still stay on task while filtering out noises. And in that case, or then in classroom, maybe it's, it's movement. So, but that also influences um, children. Because if it's too much, it's going to have an influence in, in the ability to, to listen. Then slow processing, the store and recall of information. So when I talk about slow processing, it's not, oh gosh, sorry, goodness. So, <laughs> let me just go back there, oh, sorry. So if I talk about slow processing, I'm actually not saying the IQ of the child. I'm basically talking about the time it takes for the brain to process everything that comes in via all of the um, senses. Because everything around us and how you perceive something um, uh, is perceived by senses. So if you are a slow processor, maybe what the child is hearing is hearing and listening and he's trying to make sense of it but now the teacher is going on and she's explaining 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 and he's just trying to, still to make sense of the first sentence uh, example will be like maths so it, as a teacher will explain a math um, uh, equation and there's steps maths is steps so while she's explaining this, the first step, in the child's mind, he's trying to make sense of what he's, you know, he's hearing. He's trying, he's forming pictures, he's analyzing the information, and the teacher is now going on to step two and three. So by the time the child is already um, finished processing step one, the teacher is finished, and then they missed step two and step three and maths is just an example it can be anything in a class where the teacher says welcome guys sit down take sit down take out your your science book open at page 10 we're going to start with activity two and now what happens now the child is he knows he has to sit and take out the book but what now next now he has to ask somebody okay so Slow processing also has a big impact um, on, on um, active listening skills. Self-regulate and stay attent attentive. So that is when, uh, it's the same example I just gave when you sit in church. So you filter out your, your, um, the noises or the movements, but then you can self-regulate back. Most of the time, or a lot of the time, the children struggle to self-regulate. So they don't really know that their attention is not 
there anymore or they are not actively listening anymore. They are now thinking of something else and then they stay there. They don't come back to, to listening to what, um, what's happening in the class. And then poor, poor comprehension. So it's very difficult to actively listen to somebody. Remember now actively listening is listening and make sense of, of, of things. So it's difficult to listen to somebody if your comprehension is not good. Because then they just hear, they just hear a voice and they, a, a word and they just hear, uh, uh, you know, um, syllables and stuff. That's why I'm trying to, to teach them when you listen in class and you, you, you listen and there's a word you don't understand, put up your hand immediately. Ask the teacher, explain to me, what does that word mean? Um, so that when they have a better understanding of the word, they will have a better understanding of, of what is explained, you know, in, in the class. A big one as well, they struggle to think in pictures. Um, and that is crucial also for executive functioning skills, where you have to plan ahead, where you have to make sense, be organized. Um, this morning, well, not this morning, in this week, when I worked with, worked with two students, I was actually teaching them how to think in pictures. So how to think in pictures. So they're in class and this, the teacher is, let's start, say they're doing, um, doing a subject like biology, talk, talking about different types of, um, I think the English is roots, sorry. Afrikaans is my first language now. So I think it's roots, different types of roots. But then I tell them, try and make a mental picture of what the teacher is explaining so that you have a mental image of, of uh, you know, what is explained. But if they're not good listeners, they're not going to be able to do that. Your daydreamers, you know, they miss things. They are just not there. Usually the very quiet children, you, um, grade one, two, and three, we, you don't, they, they just flow, they just flow through the grades, they find, they average, and then suddenly grade four, five, we, we starting to get, um, get, uh, get this children because they start to struggle. So they are in their own world. They are sitting there thinking of some, something else, uh, maybe they're going to a birthday party Saturday, so they are in their own worlds. And then also filtering. So what is this filtering? This is this means this child filters, so he only hears what he wants to hear. Okay, and that's also difficult for them because remember what I said in the beginning: they maybe don't like the subject; it's boring, or either it's difficult for them. So what happens if something is difficult, you try and, you know, um, you're going to try and ignore it. It's not going to happen, but they have to. Um, so they filter out information that's actually important. And then judging, same thing, is where they don't like the teacher. They don't like the subject. So it's more difficult for them to actively listen. Um, in class. So that is the factors that can influence the child's ability to practice active listening in class. Let's go on. Okay, so how does the early warning signs look? So remember now, this is not to say that if you, if we read this, this is a sign and oh my goodness, my child is a terrible listener because you will see some of the signs it can be something else as well but this should give you an indicator um, what we can do so this list here that i've got here is according to the national center for learning disabilities and early education specialists and they say a child might have problems with active listening when they have the these following um, signs. So let's look at them. So they consistently misses direction and needs them repeated. So that's when a teacher said something in class and now 
the child is, tell me again, what should I do? So they didn't have a clear understanding. And then again, it can be that they didn't understand the concept or they didn't really understand what it is they must do. And then again, I tell the children, what should you do? Put up your hand. That's all you have to do is put up your hand. They doesn't seem to, to hear you the first time. So it might be that they are in their own mind. So they are busy daydreaming, thinking of something else, or they are distracted. They've got a hard time paying attention when you talk to them. They consistently forget things, and then they will most often say, I can't remember. Okay, I can't remember. So the, I think that's the, that's the most frequent excuse we get is, no, I can't remember. But it's because they didn't, they didn't listen in class. Okay, I hope it makes sense um, to you. They struggle to follow more than one direction at a time. And again, if, we, if, if I can refer back to what we discussed earlier, it can also be slow processing. So it might be that they are just a slow processor that, in, that has an impact on their ability to actively listen. So this child might try his best to listen, but it's going too fast in class. Okay, so very, they are very distracted, restless, you know, all these things that kids do, usually shoving around, foot, foot, feet, feet moving and underneath the chair, it's, it's all um, behaviors they have to try and self-regulate, to stay on task. They don't like to be read to. Um, so it's like I say, this is, this is the, some of the early warning signs you might, you might see. But then again, it also might be attention is not good. Processing is not good, you know. Um, memory is not good so but it's just to show you because that's why I want to refer back to the beginning when I showed you the the, the trees and cognitive uh, cognitive skills everything works together for our children to be able to learn listen pay attention um, problem solve okay so let's go on so what does it mean to be a good listener so that's the first thing we have to teach them. So when somebody speaks, you have to stop talking. Okay? Then you have to switch on your ears and you have to prepare yourself now to listen. What am I listening for? Okay? So focus on what's being said. So what am I listening for? I'm going to give the kids a um, tips in that, web, that workshop on the 27th. I'm going to give them tips what to listen for um, in class to help them just to give them a guideline to what to listen for um, and that will also help with the ability to pay attention in class we have to teach them to they must listen to ideas and not only words so they have to start making sense of things and then also this one wait and watch for nonverbal communication now, what we see a lot these days is a lot of children cannot read body language. Um, and this, my, my, my um, view on it, and it's not necessarily only that, is I think definitely the era our children is, gr is growing up with tablets and cell phones and everything, they don't communicate. Um, with each other again they are on their phones like that so we do see them they do struggle to to read um you know non-verbal body languages and, and and things that that happens maintain eye contact so they are have the ability to listen and watch the teacher and follow the teacher in the class now again lots of children struggle to follow a teacher and pay attention when the teacher's moving. That's again a difficult thing for them. And then also think in pictures. So think in pictures. They have to practice it. It's going to make sense um, for them. Now, if we look at the different things or different um, um, skills that a children that ch children need to be able to do on different age groups, 
Um, I've broken it up just quickly just to show you. So if we look at our kids from age five to six, the focus there is more on comprehension listening. So listening with comprehension. So that is the good old story time where they go and sit on the, on the carpet and the teacher is reading a story and she so, shows up the picture and what are you guys, guys, what do you think, what's going to happen? Um, and then she reads on and asks questions. So what happened, you know, she asks questions maybe. So who can tell me what happened in the story? Things like that. So what do we see with these kids, these young ones? They cannot sit still on the carpet during story time. And then mostly they cannot recall what the story is all about. Um, and I don't think uh, parents often when they read a story to their child, go and tell them, okay, tell me, tell, now you tell me the story. Now you tell me the story. I don't think we do that. Um, but also then these kids, the challenges that we have in school is poor visual tracking and problem with visual information. The challenges you can have at home is they cannot remember multiple step directions. And then usually that conflicts, leads to conflict at home. So what do I mean by multiple step directions? John, please go to my room, get my slippers, and then when you come back, just get, grab me a glass of water as well. So little Johnny is on his way to the room. He knows he has to get something. So he might go to the room and what must I do? Or he might go to the room, get the slippers and then just come back without the water. Or Johnny goes back to the room and he forgets that he has to do something. So, you know, you get different types of, 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 of challenges. But at that age group, we want them to be able to listen with comprehension. So it's just read the story out loud, out loud, out loud um, understand the story, remember the story, discuss the story with them, and the child must be able to retell you the story in his own words. Okay. The next age group, and it's basically the same for the, for the higher age group, is your children ages seven to um, nine years old. So here yeah, the listening now shifts more to scholastic challenges. Okay, so now that we have to teach them to start listening for information. So we call it informational listening, where they have to listen to learn. So your active and your critical listening is needed here for them to understand and evaluate what is heard. So how does it look for them when they struggle? So they will just turn out the dull topic. So that's your typical daydreamers, yielding to distractions. They react to emotional words, jumping to conclusions, and they make, they, they fake your attention. So because it's just too difficult for them. They do not understand the information. It doesn't make sense to them. Um, and then the challenges that they have is they're not sure about the assignments. So they miss the important information. So I'm sure the parents that's here will, will know when the child gets home, they will tell you, oh, I have to do this. I've got a vague idea, but not really a good idea because they didn't actually um, they didn't actually know how to listen and how to practice informational listening. And again, this is things we can teach them. We teach them what to listen, you know, what to listen out for um, in class. The higher grades is it basically the same. The only thing here that comes now that that's added now is you've got your your um, informational, but now also your critical uh, listening and also to evaluate and analyze the information and then verbalize it. Again, the same challenges and the same, you know, same challenges at school and then also the same challenges at home. So from a younger age, it builds up. Just comprehension, retell a story. 
and then you have to start to understand information and then you have to start thinking about things you have to start start evaluating um things you have, have to start analyzing what you heard in in class and i don't i think we don't really think of listening as um something we should teach our children but we should because if we can teach them very good listening skills it's going to help with their reading their reading um, um comprehension because you uh, you get reading comprehension uh, listening comprehension first and then that translates to great reading comprehension and i just want to say I, like I said, I do for the last eight years. I've I've done I don't know how many study method courses, and really from grade four and even up to matric, the one thing I see children struggle with is comprehension because they don't understand. Right. So just to give you an idea, um, what can we do about it? So we are going to email you a ebook with active listening skills exercises that you can do with your children and then again like i said if you've got kids from a from grade four and upwards i'm doing a webinar it's very practical i'm going to show them how to listen in class what to listen out for um, i'm going to teach them how to make notes in class on their level already um, because that will translate to when they go home into homework time a better understanding of what's happening uh, or, or better understanding of the work but how can we teach our children active listening skills so at biolink we've got a program and it's i think it's a year old at this point in time i'm not 100 percent sure i think it's a year this is a crazy year but the audio lab is a specific program that we teach active listening schools to to uh, listening skills to our children and it's exclusive to to um our centers i don't want to go into much um detail with this because i want you to contact us or contact an agent in your area to explain it to you um but we do have a program to practice the active listening skills. But before I show you what we what we do at the program, I also want to mention or talk to you about the focus assessment. And why am I talking about the focus assessment? You remember I spoke about distractibility, your slow processes, or children that as a struggle, they struggle to sustain their attention. But we don't necessarily know, do your child struggle? Do, you know, do you, does your child have a, have a, um, a poor attention span? So that, that sustained attention, I want to call it like a attention stamina. They can be actively engaged for like 20 minutes. Can they do it? How fast does your child process information? Remember, we don't know if your child can process information or not if he sits there because that's not something you can see but with the focus assessment we can see is your child a slow processor or is he on par and we can we can improve that we can also see is your child distracted is it distracted by noise is it distracted by movements and that already will give you um, an idea how to help your child not only at home, but it will also help the teacher in class how to work with the child. Okay, so if you've got a, a child that is a slow processor or a dreamer for that case, where do we put that child? We put that child near the teacher. And the teacher doesn't have to go on the shoulder. Hey, Yanni, are you awake? Are you listening to me? No. She knows that child is maybe a, a slow processor or a dreamer or something. So if he's a dreamer, it's just touching on the shoulder and bringing him back to the here and now. If he's a, if we know he's process information slowly, we would know. Let's just repeat the steps again. If he's distracted, if he's visually distracted, where are you going to put that child? 
Definitely not near the do door and definitely not at the back of the class. I think you get the, the idea. So we do have an assessment and that is the first point where we start. We don't shoot from the hip. This is a scientific measurement of attentional control. Um, and it can be done online if you are in an area where there's not an agent near you or it can be done um, at a bioling center. We've got centers all over South Africa. The price, the, the, we've got a special price now for this focus and it's 250 Rand, it's normally 400 Rand. And that includes the assessment, it's a 20 minute, 20 minute assessment, the report, and then we take 40 minutes, oh, 60 minutes to explain to you and go through the report. But you can ask the agent in your area more about the, the focus assessment. So now we've got an assessment and now we can see, okay, this is what we see that the child maybe has poor processing, slow processing, poor attention, what we can do. Now, the audio lab application, this is a great, great application that we have. Um, I don't think there's anybody in South Africa that does this training with your children. But what do we do with Audio Lab is we really teach children the skill to actively listen. And we teach them from the age of five, five and a half, six, depends um, on the child. So we have different things that we do or, or um, exercises that we do, listening exercises that we do, um, depending on where the child is on that, um, on, on that age group. So what do we teach them? Listen with attention. Now they have to make sense of what they heard, what they say. We are going to help them to process the information better. We teach them to store the information better and then also to recall the information better. They are also learning how to self-regulate. So while they are doing the audio lab, the, the exercise and they think of something else, the program will give them an indication that their mind is wandering and bring them back so that they can self-regulate and stay on task. Filtering of distractions, and then also their ability to think in pictures. So with the young ones, we do, the young ones, five, six years, seven years old, we do, for instance, like stories that they listen to. Um, and then the, the, the program that we use will indicate to them when they do not pay attention. So it will bring them back. And then afterwards, our facilitators are asking questions. So now you reflect on what did you hear? What did you understand? Um, tell me about it. On the higher grades, we do more um, informational exercises with them. Um, and that's quite interesting when they listen to something that's boring. So. We can have a great four or five people and they listen to photosynthesis. It's very difficult for them to listen to it. But as they practice, they're starting to, to know how to listen, how to take notes, and um, how to recall that information. The higher they go, we also incorporate the note taking. So if we talk about your grade seven, eights, nines that we do, they listen and we give them a, a pen to start making notes. So we bring that um, exercise in as well. Don't really go into much detail. You can contact us to have a more better, um, uh, you know, if you want to exactly know how it works and the process, how it works. But you can also ask an agent in your area. So if you go to our website, at um, biolinkattention.com, there is two um, buttons at the top that um, one says find an agency. So you can click on that and then there's a different provinces and you can find an agent that is near you or you can contact us, the head office at admin at biolink.co.za um, and we will be more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, that's it. Um, 
I'm going to, let me just think I'm going to hand over to Karen. Hello. There's Karen. Karen is going to do all the questions. I, I answered most of the questions. I think you did a great okay. job. Um, I don't, there was just questions. I can't remember what time it will be on Saturday, Marlies. So, but we'll send that out on tomorrow. 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And it will be in Afrikaans, this one, right? Okay. Is there any other questions that we have? Nothing at the moment. You guys can feel free to ask any questions. I think you did a, well, a very good job. <laughs> That's why there's no questions. I tried my best. I don't know. My English was a bit finished tonight. <laughs> Oh, it looks like we are good. Okay. Okay, yes, so the recording will the recording will say be sent out tomorrow. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's just see. Uh, uh, yes, we've got B asking um, available test for eight year olds. Yes, so we test the students from grade R, so about five and a half to six years and up is when we can. Um, uh, is the children and then Corneli says it was great thank you how can we pay in order for the test to be done on seven year old you um, Adrian you can just go to your nearest agent and um, you can then just organize with them if you want to do it online if you are in an area where there's not an agent you can just email us at admin at violin that email that's on the screen and then um, John Marie will phone you and organize everything with you okay Thanks, Lizanne. Um, um, Gordon, I just want to also just add here, yeah, I, I see somebody asked about the session. Oh, yes. The session where I work with the kids, it's going to be, that one is going to be in Afrikaans um, yes. because I've, we've already got a very group, big group um, of children attending already Afri from Afrikaans schools. So mm -hmm. the English children, you can just let us know as well. We will put you on our list. We've got a list of, of, of parents already interested. We will let you know when we're going to do, um, when we have a date to do the English um, lesson as well. Yeah, we've got a question from Marianda uh, that wants to know for four-year-olds. Now, um, I can just tell you that really, um, four years, we don't test from four years old because they are just, act, they're just too small. Um, and... You know what, if they not, the other day someone, a dad phoned me and he said, my child is definitely something wrong because he's running all, all over the place and everything. And I said, how old is he? And he's like four years old. And I said, he's supposed to do that. So please, um, um, if, you, if your child is, if you're really worried about some, something specific, I would uh, suggest you go to your pediatrician. But um, we test from five and a half and up. Otherwise, if we test a four-year-old, they can't sit still for, for 20 minutes. I mean, it's just not what they're supposed to do. So the result will look terrible and you will feel that everything is wrong and it won't be the fact. So um, you can contact us definitely from five and a half. But like I said, if there's anything specific you are worried about, you can also give us a call, Marianda. Um, and then we can decide, you know, listen to what your, what your concerns are, and then we can maybe direct you in the right direction. Okay. Gordon, I also see that Mariette asked, are there any proof available that Biolink works? Mariette, um, yes, Biolink uses technology. We are the license holder for this technology in South Africa. The, the, the technology um, is proven in clinical trials and now i'm talking about double blind randomized um, clinical trials where they look at the the technology that we use compared to your normal cognitive behavioral therapy and um, programs to improve cognitive skills of kids um, and the children in those groups also um, was on medication ritalin for that one specifically and the six months follow up um, to show that the, the, the training that we do is not you train now and it's gone because we work with the brain 
it's neurocognitive exercises, the brain is neuroplastic. So the six months follow up actually still showed that the improvement in the, the, the group that the, the, um, the technology that we use, the play attention technology, that's far better still than the, the, than the other group. And the other important thing is that the children in the play attention groups, what we do, the technology that we use, didn't have an increase in their medication. Um, and now I also just want to mention, because I always say, like you heard, I'm a registered nurse. I've, been, I've worked in pharmaceutical companies. Leon Karin's husband is a professor in chemistry. We will never, ever, ever do something if there's no clinical proof. Never, ever. Because that's how we, we are put together. Um, I'm very skeptic, skeptical of a lot of things out there. And then I read the articles and I read the, 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 um, the clinical trials that is done. And then the other thing that's important is that the trials that is done is not paid by the company. So it's, in, it's, it's, not, it's independent trials that was done to show you the, um, the results that um, the, 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 the training has with the child. I hope that answers your question. If you're still unsure, you can just drop your email and I can then also just send you those clinical trials as well, the studies as well. Okay, is there anything else? Okay. Mm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think we've answered all the questions. Okay. If there's anything else, everyone can just send us an um, an email, and we will gladly either email you back or even phone you back. Okay. Okay, everyone. It was great having you. Thanks for making time this evening. Um, look out for the email for for the other workshop with your child, please. Don't send them just off. Um, come and listen what I teach them so that you can, you know, help them at home practicing it and for it, for them to get it right and forming a, a habit. Okay. Okay, Marie, thank you. I will I will send it to you. Okay, everyone. Have a great evening. See you again. Bye-bye.